today we are talking about live streaming e-commerce in China. And this is another episode of our Digital China, where essentially we're going to set the stage uh, talking about live streaming in China, the realities of what's happening on the marketing side, what's happening on the e-commerce side. And then we're going to open the floor to your questions. So anything at all that you would like to ask or add, you raise your hand, we bring you on stage and we have a chat. So to set the stage, let me first very quickly um, brief everybody on what's happening on the e-commerce side in China right now. Well, everybody around the world is talking about the rise of China's e-commerce and live streaming, and many still feel that this is a trend in China. Well, in 2021, it's no longer a trend. Live streaming is already a way of life, the way of communicating selling, marketing, talking to people. And in fact, if we look at some uh, of the major achievements of last year, if we can talk about digitalization in China, that uh, huge push into live streaming e-commerce is definitely one of them. And live streaming is not just about e-commerce, right? Live streaming can be done in order to educate. So it's educational live streaming, um, entertain, yeah, for example, concerts or you record games. And finally, it's live streaming for e-commerce. And of course, each of these three big categories has a lot, a lot of subcategories. And e-commerce is usually the most exciting one. So live streaming for e-commerce is the most exciting one because it ends in transaction. And we know so many bloggers from Via to Lijia Chi to many others on a variety of platforms where they're extremely active. And then we hear those news like, oh my God, Via sold, uh, sold the rocket or Lijia she right now is becoming actually, and Natalia can tell us more about it, but is becoming uh, a partner of Tmall and creates this cosmetics um, lab that is going to essentially help brands to create products for customers rather than just being a blogger. So there's a lot of news and a lot of innovation um, when it comes to live streaming e-commerce. But I just want to mention that apart from just live streaming e-commerce, there's many, many, many other options and all of them and in transactions. So if it, if it is, for example, um, entertainment, um, e -commerce, live streaming, right? For example, I'm a singer and I sing and my audience listens, um, there is a business model behind it. They give me tips or they pay subscription or they do both, or I take placement of products and services, etc., etc. So there's a whole uh, bunch of business models bundled uh, together. And when it comes to obviously educational live streaming, same thing, there's many, many ways and avenues how to turn it uh, into um, something exciting. So this is us just setting the stage. And guys, we're talking about live streaming e-commerce in China today. I am joined today by Sika and Natalia. And we're going to start uh, very quickly by, first of all, ladies introducing themselves. Um, I would say 30 second introduction. And then the next 30 seconds, what is your favorite fact about Chinese live streaming or live streaming e-commerce. So let's start with Natalia. Natalia, please introduce yourself and tell us what is your favorite uh, fact. Hello, everyone. Yeah, as, thank you, Ashley, for introduction. Yeah, my name is Natalia, and I'm working in Ashley's team as a marketing head. So uh, in case if you will be interested in any of the services or basically enter in China, you can always reach out to us and we will be happy to help you. And uh, answering about my favorite fact about uh, live streaming e-commerce, uh, I think that it's not actually the fact. My favorite thing about live streaming e-commerce in China is actually rural uh, live streaming. So I really like uh, sitting and watching how basically local farmers try to sell uh, their local um, produced goods or basically fruits or vegetables. They're always very creative. Create, uh, creative and also another thing which i also like about rural live streaming in chinese because it's also um, like joined by many different people and the host usually basically the head of the villages or the basically the governors and also what's interesting is that for rural uh, e-commerce live streaming there is lots of basically hosts uh, who are elderly people so then they sell very like cool uh, peaches or some other fruits. So I really like watching these kind of the things. So I think that this will be my short introduction and I can pass it to Sika. Um, 
Great, thanks, Natalia. So, hello, everybody. This is Sika.、Uh, I'm just like、uh, Natalia. I'm also working in Ashley's team, and、um, I'm doing the strategy part for those brands who want to enter into China or who would like to have a better digital presence in China market. And、um, as for the facts, what I love about live streaming here, I like to share with you、uh, a very updated、uh, data. To all of you, so、um, there is this data from a、uh, research company that shows、uh, more than half. It's fifty-two point one percent of China's total retail sales in two thousand and twenty-one, which means this year is expected to come from e-commerce. And this data in last year is forty-four point eight percentage. So this means that in two thousand and twenty one this year, China will become the first country in all of the world where e commerce sales surpass physical retail sales, which is very,、um, I mean, like phenomenal and amazing、uh, fact that I am waiting for. And also,、um, I'd like to share with you the number of online live streaming users in China in last year has already reached. Five hundred and sixty-two million, and this e-commerce live streaming users have reached like half of them, which means、uh, among ten, like in every ten of China citizens, there would be、uh, three of them are e-commerce live streaming users, which is totally. Like shocking numbers, but but as、uh, Ashley just mentioned, e-commerce in this year is no longer just some like sales channel or marketing channel. It has already become a lifestyle. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Sika.、Um, I think, guys, do start raising hands. We're gonna create a queue here with questions. So, if you would like to add something,、uh, you know,、um, also raise a hand. And meanwhile, I'm gonna have the second round of questions to the ladies.、Uh, do raise your hand if you have a question or would like to hop on stage to add something.、Um, Let's talk about you know live streaming e-commerce in 2021.、Um, are there in any insights of what are the trends? Like what is going to happen specifically this year? We all know that yes, live streaming is happening. For example, we know that you know this is no longer optional. All major brands are actually live streaming on e-commerce platforms five to eight hours every single day. And who does it? Either your in-house team does it, or your TP partner, which is your online distributor, that does it. So if you don't do it, you are clearly missing out on opportunities to reach your customers, engage with them, sell to them, etc., etc. So that is done by internal team. And of course, for big festivals, be it six, eighteen, or eleven, eleven. To China's biggest e-commerce festivals, I mean, that's an absolute must. And in fact, big bloggers、um, are booked out about、uh, five months in advance. So, if you would like to work with somebody like Vya、um, for six eighteen, chances are, and if I'm not mistaken, she is already booked out、uh, for that specific day slot.、Um, so. What about this year? What else is happening apart from you know the major the major things? Live streaming, e-commerce is booming.、Um, it's a total must. Agricultural live streaming is also happening, and we don't have enough bloggers, right? So these are the facts that everybody knows. But what else?、Uh, Natalia Sika, your insights. Yeah, I think、uh, let me start in this case. So about what's happening、uh, right now in terms of the trends. So I think、uh, number one trend, which is quite big currently, is、uh, that live streaming is no longer an option. And now basically brands they try to compete for attention from the users. That's why the element of the gamification and entertainment become an essential part of any live streaming. And there is also a special cool technologies than the、uh, the brands, for example, create.、Uh, Uh, AI host、uh, together with basically the the human host、uh, doing the session together. Then there is also a kind of the gaming elements. Then.、Um 
a live streamer horse invite other hosts and then they start basically do some kind of the games and then users also can send presents. Then there is also 3D technologies which also create a cool element of uh, the virtual stage. The, the floating uh, product is actually all around and then people tell. So it's basically become very important to keep this uh, attention rate right from the users. So I think that it's number one trend. Number two trend is that uh, basically live streaming uh, so should live streaming sessions should be very consistent so it's not that like one time you create it and then you just like see it and wait so it's not working like that so it's um, supposed to be that there is a queue of this session and then users supposed to get used to the host and then they basically know a little bit more about the brands and then they actually start uh, basically purchasing from you and number three Trend, which I also can say that live streaming is also uh, going to the lower tier cities so that it's also become widely used by uh, not only in the big cities like Shanghai, uh, uh, Beijing, Guangzhou, but it's also other cities and also because it's very, very huge in China. So the government, local government, they also start promoting different kinds of their activities and the whole industry is actually blossoming this year. So I think that in short, this is yeah something that I can, can, can say. Awesome stuff. Sika, anything to add? Um, yes, yes. From my side, um, I think I also have uh, two trends would like to share. So for the first one, actually, um, Ashley has just already mentioned it. It's like uh, in this year is no longer you, you can achieve success by doing like single channel live streaming. Now it's becoming more complicated and more um, it, it's like uh, with higher standard. So um, for the brands, it's best that they do the multi-channel live streaming, whether it's in-house or or they cooperated with those KOLs and together with the private traffic management. Um, for example, like uh, the Suning, Suning is a very uh, like huge brand in the electronics and those uh, family family electronics uh, uh, vehicles and appliances, and uh, it's it's not only uh, do the live streaming or Taobao, it also cooperated with the official media like uh, the Beijing Beijing TV. So it's doing so it has a very comprehensive live streaming uh, strategy to guide the audience to uh, absorb the the traffic and to do the sales conversion. And also, uh, just today, I read a, an article about about uh, how to build another another legend like Li Jiaqi or Via. So I think these two these two top live streamers they've already like uh, world famous and a lot of companies like MCN they also want to build another legend just like them but it's not that easy because for now the system is it's still uh, growing and developing. And also the regulations in China market is also getting more mature. So right now in the market for brands, um, it's, it's always, uh, it, it's always a risk for brands if they don't find the right, I mean the right, the professional KOL to do the live streaming for them. Because sometimes if they, they find the wrong one, uh, for example, they might uh, invest tens, tens of me, uh, tens of thousands of RMB for just for just like four to five minutes live streaming, but then they may lose they may lose uh, one one million or even more because it is very uh, a complicated system to to guarantee the effect. But uh, what I want to say is. Uh, it's very important and it's very essential uh, for the brands. If you want to enter into China and to achieve more sales by live streaming, it's not always an easy thing. So from the, from the very beginning to find the right KOL to do the cooperation is very, very important. Yeah, that's my point.
Absolutely, sounds awesome. Um, and in fact, uh, what Sika has mentioned right now, uh, when you do live streaming in China, just like with most of the marketing um, in the ma in the China market right now, you need to look at lifetime value of the customer because your per sale performance is going to be negative ROI. It is extremely expensive. You need to pay blogger their placement fee. So the, the airtime, in other words, you also need to pay bloggers commission. Based on our experience, the bloggers that are really big, they work well. Um, and of course, the very, very small ones as of your local team or your TP partner working, they also produce results. But these are different results and different formats. So to summarize what the ladies have mentioned, technology is important to make sure that you're constantly innovating. You cannot do the same live stream again and again. You need to add on better software uh, on the back end. You need to have professional uh, a green screen studio you need to make sure that you're adding let's say 3d live streaming also virtual uh, background etc to make it all constantly interesting and fun uh, regular live streams is number two tip you need to make sure that they are happening every single time that you show up going into lower cities definitely this year this trend will continue evolving multi-channel live streaming we've mentioned right not just on one platform but actually do it on a few platforms simultaneously script is very very important important. You need to be able to write, rewrite and innovate your script because there are triggers that not only sales triggers, but also psychological triggers, um, cultural triggers. For example, what's happening in China right now, this week, this day, today, how do we make sure that this is relevant? How do we tell that story? So you need to have a great script and you need to, of course, train your staff to uh, know what are the fixed points and where can they go a bit astray and, you know, keep things interesting if you are running these live streams in-house. And if you're hiring a blogger, it's even more important to uh, write that script and align on that script and practice uh, before uh, going live. Uh, building new legends as of building new KOLs uh, is not easy, uh, you know, to have somebody new who is reaching as the scale of uh, VIA or or Li uh, nevertheless, uh, this is something that a lot of MCNs are focusing on. And of course, regulations in this particular industry keep changing. Right now, we have three people on stage with us. We have Thomas, Farty, and uh, Iris Siema. We are going to start with Thomas. Welcome on stage. Please ask your question, and we'll be delighted to help. Thank you so much. Thank you for bringing me on stage. I had seen the group um, in my uh, my calendar, and I... I um, added an alarm for this group. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I have two questions. Ooh! They're not to do specifically with um, e-commerce, but I, I think they're universal questions. So myself, I, uh, I started in quite a few different uh, kids educational series in China. I speak Chinese and I've done live streaming in China for quite a few different companies. Uh, I'm really interested in live streaming in China. However, I have moved out of China. Um, I've looked into it. However, there are two big uh, roadblocks um, for me to try uh, live streaming right now. One is the fact that I don't have a Chinese ID and two is not physically being in China. I know most live streaming platforms require a Chinese ID and Chinese IP address. So my two questions are how can I live stream in China without being a Chinese citizen if I can? And can I live stream in China without physically being in China? Right. Thomas, great question. Very, very important. And I would like to just give quick disclaimer. So we are obviously not legal professionals here. So we cannot, uh, you know, advise and give give any sort of legal advice, because your question is concerning, um, you know, regulatory side of things. However, based on our experience as you know, market is working um, in this market, right now in China, there are, uh, there are 117 platforms that are doing live streaming. Okay, 117. So obviously, all of them have their uh, different rules, regulations, etc. However, there are a few basics that are um, dictated by a bigger body, regulatory body. And th the simple rules for foreigners are, number one, you need to essentially be a foreigner that is physically located in China because only then you are sort of, you know, uh, what, whatever you're saying on air is actually um, covered by the Chinese law. Right. So that is why this is the basic uh, requirement. The second one is you as a foreigner cannot just go live randomly, but you need to get a permission from the uh, platform and platform needs to get that permission from the uh, relevant regulatory 
uh, department. Uh, that being said, they're going to check your background. If you've done live streaming before, you know how it goes, right? They're going to check your background and they're going to also define, okay, what topic are you live streaming on? Which room are you live streaming? What is your account? What are, uh, you know, the platforms, et cetera, et cetera. And then they will give you this permission letter. So with that letter, you will be, for example, able to live stream on Douyin. And that also means that, for example, if you're live streaming today, um, uh, like we are live streaming, if that was a live stream, right? There's five people and I want to invite my friend, Bill, to also live stream with me, but he is a foreigner and doesn't have the permit. That is also not allowed, right? This is not, uh, this is not something that's possible. And another very important thing is you can not speak any foreign language during your live stream in China. You need to speak Chinese. Okay. So these are the three things that are sort of broad. Uh, big regulations and there are variations of those or rather self um, you know self regulations of the platforms of how to comply to these three things so to your question how can I uh, you know do it without physically being in China that is sort of in breach of the first um, um, term and then um, I'm not sure because you said you are teaching, you know, and, you know, communicating. I'm not sure whether you're planning to speak Chinese actually on air or any other language. So that might or might not be in breach of the third term. And of course, the fact that you do not have Chinese ID, um, uh, that might be one of the things that the government will ask you when they actually give you this uh, paper of uh, paper of approvals that you bring to all other platforms to approve your account and your live streaming rights. So it's not as straightforward as it was, let's say, three years ago. And uh, I again, this is not a legal advice. This is not an exhaustive uh, information, um, but I, I hope that it points you in the right direction. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Um, let's move. Uh, I mean, Sika and Natalia, maybe you have anything else to add. Maybe uh, maybe you have some other insights for Thomas before we move on to the next question. Mm, mm -hmm. I think I think you just already like very fully explained that. Yeah, I have nothing to add. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome, awesome. Let's move on to Sparky right now. And guys in the audience, let me remind you, if you have a question or would like to hop on stage to talk about live streaming e-commerce, to add something, to add a story from the first-hand experience, etc., just raise your hand. We're going to bring you on stage. So either a question or a first experience story. Sparky, you are on. Awesome to have you on the show today. Ashley, thank you so much for having me here. Uh, it's definitely uh, exciting and great to be here as well. I got you on my calendar, uh, so I thought I should definitely pop in. And ask you. <laughs> uh, we got connected uh, through Peggy uh, a few weeks ago, and then since then I've been uh, connected to the WeChat group as well, which has been very helpful, um, definitely learning a lot. Uh, so um, my, my question is, okay, I'm going to sound maybe quite, quite amateurish when I'm asking you a few questions, but I thought you would be the right person to give us, give me the right advice. Um, we, uh, I have a business that's been running out of China for the last eight years, uh, but that's mostly for business from, our, um, from China to the rest of the world, mainly into the Middle East. Um, but over the course of the last year through the pandemic, we've really started focusing into China as well now, since we, I have an office there and I have people on the ground uh, so we really kind of uh, looking into, um, you know, spreading our wings into the e-commerce space, especially. Um, now, with the team I have over there, we've managed to set up um, the required um, direction for the uh, live streaming facility. I've got um, some products lined up primarily for homeware and all of that. Uh, but my question is now we're in a space where, you know, in such a crowded market, um, how do we get ourselves really strongly visible out there? And and especially with products, out there, how do we find out what are the trending things? And is there a way that we can plug in with you as well as services? Uh, so pretty much all these questions together is what I have for right now. That makes me sense. 
Awesome. Um, so when it comes to watching trends, um, I think, yeah, because your question is how to get noticed. So in China to get noticed, uh, it's very simple. There are two ways and usually they're combined. One way is amazing content to the niche group. So you need to really understand your customer, niche customer very, very well. And what do I mean by niche customer? It means not just oh, a woman who is 30 years old from Shanghai, but add on three other filters. For example, that likes classical music of XYZ period, plus she is a mother of a newborn baby who is three months old and lives in the north of Shanghai or something like this, right? Very, very, very niche uh, audience with at least three in-depth filters. So content is number one. And number two, it is pay for play. So pay for play and per pay play is the name of the game in China in 2021. There's very little organic traffic. It can be built on some platforms such as Red. It can be built on some platforms um, such as WeChat, but you need to have something strong. For example, for WeChat, you need to have strong offline presence, right, where you can display your QR code and people essentially can scan and come and, you know, use it as a CRM tool. And that's how you slowly and gradually through word of mouth on WeChat, for instance, build your community. But if that is missing, then again, you, you need to pay and advertising on WeChat are also expensive and not very uh, effective always for you know branding purposes so uh, on red it can be awesome but you need to have a community of grassroots KOLs just promoting and creating the chamber effect so um, essentially when it comes to entering China uh, for example on uh, Tmall, right? When global brands are going to China, uh, there is a recommendation that Tmall is actually giving out to uh, companies. They say if your business size is around turnover, right, is around 30 million US dollars globally, then you're probably ready for China. And if not, then probably, you know, you can try operating in China by, let's say, cross-border e-commerce, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not saying this to discourage businesses. And I don't, don't know, obviously, the scale of your business. Maybe it's exactly that. Maybe it's more, maybe it's less. But if it's a smaller business, then you need to understand that a lot of people in the market as of Chinese domestic competitors and also international companies that they actually planned out a budget. They're actually competing very seriously, as you said. It's a very competitive market um, there. So you will have to play that game uh, one way or another. And my b biggest advice would be, number one, when you start investing in the platforms, um, you need to really understand your customers. So make sure that you have a research strategy so research your competitor, research their digital journey, and make sure that when you're making investments to intersect them, these are uh, truly the best, the most impactful times to meet them. Number two, invest in great content. And number three, have the great partners. You already have the team in China. That's awesome. So are you operating internally those e-commerce platforms? If so, make sure that, for example, they are providing supply chain. Your team is providing also live streaming. Uh, your team is also handling customer service. These are all three different jobs that, for example, TP partners are usually covering. And if you have your in-house team and not collaborating with TP partner, you need to have all these different departments uh, working in sync. And this is a full-time job. There need to be people that specifically know very, very well what are the expectations of Chinese consumers or how to do, for example, marketing on um, um, e-commerce platforms. So that's usually the job. Everything that ends in transaction is the job of a TP partner. And it can be either be done by them or by, you know, internal team. But make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. And of course, in terms of branding and marketing agencies, another side of it, legal is another side of it. Uh, so these are the three things that I would say are the most important. Have your strategy very clearly defined so you know what you're doing and where your dollars are going. China is extremely expensive and competitive. Number two, make sure that you are, uh, you know, you have your e-commerce uh, platforms and channels set up and you have the right partners or in-house team. Um, and finally, that, yeah, you continue continuously building uh, that brand impactfully, right? And adjust. China is so fast. So you try something, um, you establish your baseline, and then you improve on your baseline. You go and learn with the same customer. And the sooner you understand what is your lifetime customer value, the better, because that will be essentially something that kickstarts your business model and proves it whether or not, you know, in China this is workable and what needs to be done in order to adjust it for the market. 
Yeah, that's brilliant, actually, Ashley. Thank you so much. We we do have an in-house team uh, that's managing the three things that you mentioned as well. At the same time, we would definitely would want uh, an external intervention for the marketing strategies and all of that as well. So we are at the moment open to that. So uh, I understand that you have a company that does this as well and if so uh, would you be uh, uh, potentially interested to have a discussion about that absolutely uh, so on my profile there is uh, an email ashley at chosan.co uh, just drop me a line and i'm gonna i'm gonna connect you with my team for further discussion definitely very happy to chat about it awesome sparky thank you so much for your advice thanks for your time as well Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, uh, cool. We are moving on to Irisima. How are you? Hi, Ashley. Thank you for bringing me in. And I've been listening to your uh, daily talks, and it's it's really really inspiring. I'm learning a lot of things. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have uh, two questions that are quite specific to the area that I work in. Uh, I wanted to know how are uh, European luxury brands approaching the live streaming e-commerce if they are doing it and if they're doing so if they're doing their own or if they're like uh, doing it with a partnership with some um, with some other platforms and and stuff like how how is it going for for luxury brands yeah, I'm sure that Natalia and Sika will be able to give some specific examples um, shortly. Um, in general, I would say 2020 was the year when all luxury brands, no matter big, small, snobbish or not, got on uh, e-commerce and got on live streaming e-commerce as well, uh, just because they really did not have a choice. And some of them are doing better. Uh, some of them understand the power of it. So they, uh, they have their internal team explain the product. Some of them are using technology, virtual KOLs. Some of them are uh, putting together shows like fashion shows and you know bring people behind the scenes and really really investing in that educational aspect of brand building plus a bit of this sales aspect but you know mostly on branding side and others are not doing so well they are awkwardly trying at times and flopping and really underestimating the power of uh, live streaming so it's really a mixed uh, of uh, mixed uh, reviews i would say um uh, and as for specific examples i could mention a few but let me let me pass it on to Sika and natalia so they could also share uh, their insights Uh, yeah, let me in this case add. So yeah, Irasima, as Ashley mentioned, so there is a, a different formats of the live streaming, uh, so which has been organized by a few luxury basically brands, so on the different platforms. And uh, what I would like to mention here, because Ashley in very detailed uh, were answering on the first uh, question from the previous speaker about the strategy. That's why then we spoke about the luxury brands. It's also important to have your own strategy for the platforms, what you try to do, because the live streaming session is not just we go in on the air. There also should be like a thinking behind what goal we want to achieve. That's why speaking about the examples, there was a very uh, like big failure of the Dior live streaming show in uh, January. Then uh, basically it was not like a sales live streaming, but it was exactly like a show. And then uh, it was supposed to basically to have a discussion panel. So they're basically the, the head of the fashion house will share the views they will share basically the trends but it was so boring for the uh, consumers and it was no basically entertainment no much information about the product so users were very very disappointed that's why then we speak about that uh, life uh, luxury brands go into the live streaming so uh, most of them they first of all have this like a strategy so then they think about like what we want to achieve how it will be also the part of our like big marketing strategy, this is the first thing. And the second thing I also want to mention that when we speak about live streaming in 2021, we need to understand that there is a two kind of the direction. The first direction is when basically we hire outside 
host or for promotion for basically the whole session. And then the second direction, it's then our in-house sales team are actually doing live streaming session because they know products better. That's why for luxury brands, I think that it's also the same, like kind of important to understand. So which format you're going for, what goal you want to achieve, who is your target audience for whom you're basically doing that. After that, you can identify what's actually the best platform to communicate with your targeted audience and the third one to identify who will be basically hosting this session for you and what actually will be pros and cons of this cooperation. This is something that I can add. Yes. Yeah, so, okay, okay. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, go on. Sorry. Please go ahead. No, no, I just, I just wanted to comment that like, like for me, the, um, the reason I asked this question is that I think that for them, it's such a um, difficult balance to keep the brand in a luxury position, something that it's kind of like inaccessible in a way. And I was just wondering if you had like some good examples of someone that did something good, because um, I know that like the, the medium in itself, it's not the issue, I think it's more like the way that it's, it's approach, like the, the way that the brands approach it, the way that you said, and actually I had a second question that it's really, really quick that, uh, you spoke quickly about, uh, digital avatars. And I just wanted to know, like, if some, like, if someone is doing something interesting in that realm of like having, for example, like a, like a virtual um say uh virtual live streaming or this kind of stuff if someone is experimenting further more than the than the um, just video uh format absolutely so there's a lot of uh, people experiment first of all in china uh 2020 and 2021 are the years where we have the highest number of new virtual bloggers appearing so these are literally like uh 3D uh, virtual influencers that sing, dance, or there are a few that specifically focus on lifestyle. So they just showcase, you know, share their life, their thoughts, and essentially showcase their lifestyle and people absolutely love it. There's also, of course, a whole bunch, I would even say a zoo of cute animals that are performing uh, tricks and all of them are virtual, virtual, virtual KOLs. So we see uh, the rise of them. Uh, many of them are new and there are in fact some MCNs, which are multi-channel network, which is a company that manages bloggers. Uh, a few MCNs that specifically focus on growing these virtual influencers. So they are not taking up real people, but they are uh, uh, focusing on virtual influencers. So the, first of all, there's many of them. Uh, secondly, there are many collaborations, or I can't say many, but many more collaborations right now between real people, uh, live streamers and virtual live streamers, um, especially when um, real human needs to live stream for like eight hours every day, right? Then the virtual KOL can take up like 20, 30 minutes every hour so the human can rest and also just changes the pace a bit. So this is fun to see. And a few brands are, uh, as mentioned, are participating, but primarily local Chinese brands, domestic brands, they're more brave. Uh, so they follow this, you know, kind of succeed fast and fail fast and just try things fast route. And of course, we are also seeing platforms like uh, Tmall, for instance, uh, creating their own uh, virtual KOL uh, software where you can go as a brand, for example, in the cosmetics industry, and you can program your virtual influencer and that virtual influencer is uh, going to live stream 24 hours on your main page and you can give them character, give them the answers, uh, you know, personalize their dress, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not very developed, but you know, it's getting a bit better. Um, so uh, there are a lot, a lot of developments from platforms, from MCNs, from the mix of real people and not real people. In terms of if your question is, are there any luxury brands that are developing like their own virtual influencer uh, to represent a brand, then as far as I know, at this stage, no, um, apart from those kind of uh, gen uh, generic ones that appear on Tmall, etc. But then there's um, definitely a big business case. I believe that's why it's going to be moving in 2021 and also next year, 22. Brands will need to invest in building their own blogger rather than pay somebody else to uh, build their blogger and then build essentially their own uh, competitor, 
because all these guys, what are they going to do when they have millions of followers? They're going to create their own brand. MCN is going to create it for them. Or if it's an independent blogger, they're going to create their own brand and essentially go out and compete with you, right? Because they have the power, they have their relationship with the customer, they have the traffic. So why would you as a brand go and sponsor your future potential competitor when you can build somebody uh, like a virtual KOL fully in-house, and you can actually also employ somebody uh, for three years. And in China, the uh, timeline of a, of a blogger is usually two years up to three years, depending on the type of live streaming and content. So you employ somebody on a three-year contract and this person just goes ahead and you know promotes for you um, and you have a person on staff, which is, I, I believe, the future of where live streaming is going. And ladies, Sika Natalia, please, of course, uh, jump in and uh, share your insights. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to, to add because Hiroshima asked about some like successful cases. So the one which comes to my mind, it's actually was during the singles day. There was a few basically luxury brands which did a good job. So it was, for example, Barbary or La Perla because they were uh, basically featuring the like models, new models for their promotion. And it was uh, basically going on Timo. So... But again, it was if uh, how we basically identify successful because there, as mentioned, there was a few set, like as goals which can be achieved. And if we talk about the conversion rate, so obviously during this singles day, I mean, like for the Barber and La Perra, it was quite successful. If we talk about basically engagement and brand awareness, so I can also call Paul Smith and some other luxury brands, which also was good in terms of like bringing attention and communicating this very consumers. So that's why it's actually very important to understand how we evaluate and after that it's possible to give more examples for you. And yeah, as Ashley mentioned so far, basically in terms of the virtual host, it's still in the stage of the development. And I can actually add that more interesting kind of the technologies and like some kind of things is actually happening more in like entertainment and gaming live streaming just because it's more kind of the fun and more opportunities and creativity gives people great great thank you so much and one last thing um the previous person that was asking he talked about a wechat group i would love to be part of that i don't know if i can find it somewhere all uh, right. So for WeChat, I do encourage you to add uh, Peggy, who is the center of gravity of everything um, China related on Clubhouse. Um, she is absolutely phenomenal. Her WeChat ID is Shanghai Peggy, one word. So if you add her on WeChat, once she uh, accepts your invite, please uh, ask her to be invited into the uh, relevant WeChat group uh, because there are so many groups and they are very often maxed out at 500 people. So she will be able to add you onto the relevant one. And uh, yeah, it would be great to have you um, in that community as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And ladies yes. and gentlemen, yes, yes, Sika, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, I just want to add on a few things regarding uh, her qu her questions about the live streaming luxury, because I'm not sure uh, whether in our audience maybe there's some uh, some other people they are interested in this topic. So um, I just like to share a little bit more, because um, it's not the first time that I I I have got this question that why why luxury brands they're not having a such like a relatively good performance on live streaming uh, e-commerce in China because, you know, e e live streaming is such a unstoppable trend. But I think uh, before we answer in this question, we have to understand that uh, why consumers, they shop through live streaming in China. So firstly, uh, it's cost effective. They can get a lower price. They can get a discount uh, like they can get this discount in other channels, but only on this live streaming show, or even sometimes they could get a limited time discount or limited edition. So for luxury brands, we know their position is pretty high. It's not that close to to like uh, the, the mass people. So when people, they are visiting the luxury live streaming rooms, they would have higher expectations they would have high expectations regarding the design, uh, the hosts, the products, and 
the the total the, like the full experience or why why don't they like uh enjoy uh, enjoy a a much better and much realistic uh experience on the offline store and why why don't they just just uh, pay the bill on the offline while they will pay the bill on the uh, online live streaming so i think uh one of the key points is the experience is the brand position of luxury brands and also just as um natalia has mentioned some brands some luxury brands they they did a good job and i also want to mention a case which is um last year in may so um there is this show uh from a kol uh, she is a uh, makeup and fashion beauty kol and she cooperated with a uh, free trade free trade district and then uh the 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 brand for this live streaming show is amers so this live streaming was la uh, lasted for three and a half an hour and uh she sells she sold a product which is a cali purse cali purse from amos and uh on the offline store it sells uh, it sells at nearly three uh, thirty thousand rmb but on her live streaming it sells at uh 16,000, 16,000 RMB. So it's much, it's much lower. And in this case, the product would sell very great, very good. It's like almost within one second, it's, it's all sold out. So um, I think from this case, we can learn that uh, firstly, there's not usually only one way for luxury brands to do the live streaming, like the in-house live streaming. They can also work with other KOLs or bloggers. And secondly, if they really want to achieve like sales success in live streaming show, the price, the cost effectiveness is also something they really have to uh, pay attention to. Yeah, that's my Yeah, point. and this is a great example. So essentially for luxury brands, this is a choice, right? Um, uh, very often they're not willing to make this uh movement on the price and then you need to be creative like okay can you can you give additional gifts or service um uh, and still on live streaming very often some sort of best price ever is expected cool um guys would like to remind you that today we're talking about live streaming e-commerce here uh on this clubhouse you can raise your hands to get on stage and ask a question or contribute your first hand insights as well please raise your hands anytime uh in the next 15 minutes and meanwhile i'm gonna ask uh, ladies uh, the last question for today and this is one of my favorite questions what is not working so we're all talking about live streaming in china being the hurrah great thing new uh new thing an absolute must and how much a blogger a had sold and how awesome something is developing but at the same time we cannot um, deny it. There are some issues. There are some things that are not working out financially, business models, uh, you know, fake followers, inflation of uh, the, the KOL bubble, in other words, right? The fact that it's very expensive to collaborate with uh, them. It's very difficult to train staff. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that is not working. And let's just highlight a few things that are not working perfectly. And um, I think this will provide also additional insight to all of our phenomenal audience today. Sika, Natalia, any ideas? What's not working? And there's silence. I don't okay, know. let me let, got to mute herself. I, I see, I see. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that Sika maybe wants to share her ideas first, but yeah actually i think that uh about like what's working what's not working we will talk in more details during ashley's master class on 23rd march so you are guys just yeah invited to to join us and like ask us for more information and speaking about like what's specifically not working so in recent uh basically surveys and studies about the complaints from the users about live streaming the most important basically 
demand was to improve quality control and improve after sales services. Uh, so why it's actually happening? Because users feel that uh, the promotion product during live streaming session, they don't really match uh, the product which they receive uh, after live streaming. So essentially they saw one product and then they were super inspired and super thrilled to receive it. And then the deliveries actually happened. They found that the reality is a little bit different. So this is the first thing. So make sure that your product is exactly how you promote it. So then another one is actually strengthening the fight against counterfeits. So it's again related to basically the luxury live streaming or the products, which is quite expensive. And then it's not, it sounds quite, quite boring and quite obvious about counterfeits, but actually there was a case in Kwaisho and I'm sure that Sika can share a little bit more about the blogger Simba and then how he has been fined for selling like a kind of like a bird's nest. So, and this is a huge actually thing. And the last thing which I also want to mention is that users usually uh, like claim, uh, complaining about the product categories, that there is not much diversity about promoted products during the live streaming session. So, and I think that it's also related that usually brands, they agree to have a certain price uh, down or like a certain kind of like a limited uh, offers for certain product categories, but it's not enough di diversified for the users. So I think that this is something that the main points, but there is obviously a few more. And I think that Sika can add a little bit on it. Yeah, thank you, Natalia. So um, just now you've mentioned uh, the event the event happened on Kwai Show e-commerce uh, live streaming. So I'd like to share a little bit more about that. So Singba is one of the toppest live streamers in China, and he's doing very, very well on Kwai Show platforms. But uh, last year there there was this like scandal is about the bird nest because in China, bird nest is usually regarded as a very um, expensive, but a very, uh, a very like uh, valuable, valuable gift, gift. And um, it's very nutritious, especially for those uh, female, for those uh, pregnant women, for those elders. So, um, so, so last year on um, October, so Singba's team, they sold fake, fake bird's nest in the live stream. And actually on that live streaming show, there are more than 50,000 orders were made and the unit price was very, was not that low. So for the whole sales, uh, sales revenue is was pretty high. But uh, on November 1st, so a fan of this live streamer, he questioned, he questioned the bird's nest quality and actually uh, he found that the real ingredients for this so-called bird nest was shown to be just sugar and water. It's nothing, it's nothing about bird's nest. It's just a mixture of sh sugar and water. So uh, as you can imagine, so those 50,000 orders, uh, the, the consumers behind those orders, they got like furious, they got very angry. And then uh, this live streamer, uh, he responded in the live streaming said uh, the bird's nest is genuine and that uh, the person who questioned him was just blackmailing him. But after like the consumer rights activities uh, issued him a test report questioning and all those uh, research process, it turns out uh, this is just this is a really scandal. And at the at the end, on December last year, this live streamer, he was fined almost 1 million RMB. And actually his account was banned on Kwai Show for 60 days. And also he had to give back those money to consumers. Uh, and this value is more than 69 million RMB. So it is quite a scandal on the e-commerce live streaming world, which also shows us uh, the live streaming system is not that mature now. And although we can see a lot of opportunities there, but there's also 
uh, very much the challenges and also for the Chinese government and the related regulation organizations, they're also like enhancing the monitoring to those live streamers. Yeah, and this is something uh, this is something uh, we would like to share you about the, the scandal, the case between the uh, opportunities. And also, I just want to share about um, because for the past years, maybe if you have a very good product, you have a very good discount, and then maybe you can achieve some kind of success. But right now, because this market is getting more mature and the competition is getting more fierce. So right now, a really excellent live streaming is not only about like, oh, if I find Via or if I find Austin Lee, then I can achieve millions of selves. It's not just like that. Uh, it's now more, it's getting more comprehensive and it's getting more uh, higher standard. So right now, if we want to achieve a a a a re relatively successful live streaming performance, so firstly, of course, the person is very important. So we have to have this professional and excellent live streamer because uh, the live streamer is just like a brand. He has his personal brand. For example, Li Jiaqi. Li Jiaqi, he is very good at selling beauty and makeup products. So he has a very stable and huge fans, fan base. So those fan base, they are highly loyal to him. So first, first step is to find those uh, professional and very uh, like excellent live streamer who has a very uh, high loyalty fan base. And then it's also about the product category. So uh, the, you have to find this match, the relationship between the live streamer and your product category. For example, uh, if you are selling something like uh, 3C, like uh, phones, like cameras, or, uh, or, or, or the 3C, like uh, digital products, then you have to find Luo Yonghao because he is the number one live streamer uh, among this product category. So you, you can't find Li Jiaqi to sell these frizzy products, then it will be like um, lower the effect, lower the sales performance. So the product category must match the live streamer. And then also the supply chain is, is pretty key. Yeah, and also a, a very like uh, backup, a very excellent operation team, the strategy team is also pretty important. So uh, all in all, right now, a good, a, a good, a successful live streaming is not only about KOL, about live streamer, it's about a whole teamwork, a complicated teamwork. Yeah, so, and this is a beautiful yeah. example. Thank you, Sika. The question was, what is not working? What is bad right now? So what is bad? What do you think is not working great right now? Oh, and I think you're muted. So if you are muted, let me just uh, also share my take. What's not working in live streaming uh, right now? First of all, there's huge fake fan economy, right? So essentially people are purchasing and there are farms, program farms, and also with real people uh, that are essentially watching your live streams. So it's fake audience, fake fans, fan, fake subscribers. Number two, fakes go to the extent of actual transactions. There are companies that actually purchase um, the product that you're selling on live streaming e-commerce, and then they're waiting for one day or sometimes two, usually one, and then they essentially uh, request a refund and ship it back to you. So you as a provider, let's say within Tmall, you need to um, handle e-commerce, uh, what is it, delivery yourself and refunds yourself. So as a brand, you not only paid somebody for, you know, fake traffic and fake promotion, but also um you essentially need to pay for your products uh, you know being shipped one way and the other plus it drops your um uh, star ranking on the platform so that happens a lot and sometimes that happens with bloggers with mcns but usually the smaller ones especially be wary of those that promise you specific sales numbers for example they say oh our promotion costs you know three hundred thousand rmb but we promise that we're going to sell for one million rmb 
then basically run because nobody can promise you how much they're going to sell. And if they do commit to this kind of KPIs, I'm sure that they will sell, but then a big portion of it will uh, come back um, um, in essentially uh, refunds. The next thing, of course, is KOLs are extremely expensive and inflated. Um, 90%, if not 95% of Chinese KOLs, especially in live streaming, they are actually part of an MCN, which means there is a company that uh, is managing them and they are sharing, uh, you know, profit with this company. So the company acts as an agent, like Hollywood star back in the 1950s, uh, who is essentially appearing on screens, but all the money is made by the agent. So a little bit similar here, they are helping to build your profile, to train you if you need to change your accent or your presentation, to help you with the team when it comes to taking pictures, cutting videos, sharing it on a variety of platforms. Um, but ultimately, it's very, very expensive to work with uh, MCNs um, and KOLs. And there is a huge shortage of KOLs, especially when it comes to live streaming, uh, uh, live streaming e-commerce right now. Um, we have around 3 million um, talent gap. And this doesn't mean that we need 3 million live streamers, but it means that there are, you know, sales, staff, agricultural live streamers, et cetera, et cetera. There are people that actually sell through live streaming that need to be trained in the next one to two years. Um, so that is important. And of course, as Sika also has mentioned, supply chain, right? You are working on live streaming e-commerce, it's still e-commerce. Uh, supply chain is extremely important. When you go to um, VS office, you will see that it's not just a studio where they're sitting and chatting. It's not a radio show. It is truly a warehouse. It's the whole supply chain operation and the problems occur when you give, for instance, your product uh, to a blogger and the blogger doesn't have their supply chain sorted out. So then customers become extremely frustrated um, and vice versa. There are bloggers that actually work with brands and brands do not have their, let's say, supply chain figured out. So that needs to be a match. So these are the three problems among many others that I uh, personally see uh, very important uh, this year guys this must be the last chance for you to raise your hand and ask just one more question we are talking about live streaming e-commerce today and digital china uh, so please raise your hand if you would like to hop on stage to contribute or ask a question and of course make sure that you follow uh, us on clubhouse that you follow Sika, Natalia, and myself as well. So if you follow us with a bell, you will actually be notified next time we host a room or um, uh, join uh, on stage to talk about uh, digital China. Um, yes, we have one question, and Dayo, I'm bringing you on stage right now. Hey, Dayo, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for this, uh, Ashley. It's been very, very informative. Um, so my question is, um, well, I'm, I'm based in, in South Africa, um, obviously, in Africa, but I read a report recently um, that sort of live stream and e-commerce is looking to be very big in, in Europe and other parts of, um, of the world, but particularly in Europe. So what I was going to ask you is, what are some of the in your in your experience what are some of the limitations that you faced in terms of adoption or what do, what do you think are some of the limitations people will face as they're adopting um live streaming e-commerce in, in other geographies in the world just curious about your opinions on that right let me start with a few obvious ones and the uh, sig and tali can also hop in uh well, first of all, um, I think you need to be on a fast device. My husband is from Germany, so uh, Central European, I would say. And uh, I cannot tell you how shocked I am every time we go back uh, to Europe to see what kind of phones people are using. So some people are still on analog phones without smartphones. And that's fine, you know, for their purposes. But there's just no uh, huge habit. 
China went mobile first long, long time ago, where entertainment is happening on mobile, uh, payments are happening through mobile. Basically, your whole life is mobile first. Gaming is happening on mobile. Live streaming is happening on mobile. Um, Europe, uh, in different parts, obviously, Europe has uh, 20, 30 countries, so they're all very different. But, uh, you know, hardware is important. Second is software. How good is your... Um, you know, how good is your 4G? I mean, half of China, big cities right now are on full 5G coverage, which is incredible. It's fast, it's cool, it's easy, it's cheap. Um, you know, in Europe, it's it, it may or may not be a different story. We are sitting, for instance, in Cologne or we're sitting in um, Dusseldorf in Germany, right? And half the time uh, we are chasing um, a Wi-Fi signal all around the house because it's impossible to even have a WhatsApp call. I'm not even talking about live streaming or any sophisticated interaction online. So software is a, another challenge. At the same time, uh, three number three is definitely people's habit. So in China, it doesn't matter whether you are, you know, a child that's basically 10 years old or somebody who is in their uh, 70s, 80s, um, people generally feel excited about technology and they understand that the only constant in cha is change and that we need to adapt in order to survive and the technology is ultimately good. So this is the base belief. Obviously, there are some people that are more wary or uh, do not want to use technology, but the majority of people are on that journey, on that train. In Europe, I see that the majority of people are off the train and try to, you know, kind of stay away from it, uh, stretch adoption of new tech for as much as possible. And this is a major, uh, you know, shift. When it also comes to ecosystems, so China is very powerful and very strong when it comes to ecosystems. For example, e-commerce live streaming in China uh, started to really pick up when uh, Alibaba uh, opened their Taobao Live. And Alibaba already had all this traffic um, uh, essentially uh, on their platform and all these sales and they just created a new form how to make it even more entertaining, even more real life, even more cool, right? So that's where um, uh, really they were able to use this the power of ecosystem to just add on additional function in Europe and in the West in general and, and the rest of the world, not just the West, but let's say the rest of the world. We don't have such powerful ecosystems. We have platforms that are social media or e-commerce like Amazon and Facebook, and they are all trying to build their own thing, but there's no power uh, very often to change uh, swiftly people's behavior and introduce something on a massive scale. So that might be another challenge. And so these are the a few things that I see among um, the fact that, uh, you know, bloggers, for example, in China, Chinese people are very pragmatic. They, they go and become bloggers and they go like, oh, my God, um, you know, show me the money. Show me where the money is. And uh, I'm on it. And people just embrace. We, we see people live streaming to sell hot chili sauce in the villages. They're sitting in wet market. And they have a live streaming uh, phones, like three of them, and they're selling their hot chili oil and people come to them or they pay and then, and then they um, hire the delivery to deliver those hot chili sauces all across the small town. And that happens in lower tier cities. So in Europe, um, I, I, I would be shocked to the point of heart attack if I go to a wet market, uh, to a fresh farmer's market and see something like that. But I'm sure that it is coming in one way or another. Uh, but essentially, I think also the speed is different. Um, Sika, Natalia, do you have a take on that? Yeah, so um, just now, um, Ashley, you've mentioned uh, right now in China, it's all about mobile, mobile. But uh, here, I'd like to just add on a little bit about the background. Yeah, because um, I'm not sure that uh, among our audience, if there's uh, anybody who's interested in the development of China's like online live streaming, maybe I can share just a little bit. What do you think? Yes, please. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, great. Um, so it's not always like that because um, China's online live streaming uh, is actually started in 2005, but it broke out in 2016. So uh, right. So uh, from uh, from 2005 to now, it's like um, more than 15 years of development. And actually, uh, from the very beginning, 
the live streaming device, like the key channel is PC. It's PC. And um, it started from PC with chat room mode and live show mode, which means you can chat with a bunch of people just like we're doing in right now in Clubhouse. Uh, so uh, so even 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 some people, they were thinking like uh, Clubhouse is not something new because like in uh, 15, 16 years ago in China, there is something similar to this kind of uh, model. And then uh, at that time, people, they would sing together, they would uh, doing the dance show in front of the audience uh, through the PC channel. But uh, at that time, the content is pretty single. It's not that versified. It's mainly the live showrooms about entertainment. But uh, when we are stepping forward, uh, it comes to the next next time, or we can say the next period is from uh, like 2012 to 2014, because at that time, um, the gaming, like the esports, the gaming, gaming is pretty uh, developing pretty fast. And at that time, there are several uh, very important platforms. They've developed the gaming live streaming. Uh, and in China, there's like a huge a huge number of people, mostly the young people, uh, the students, they have this huge uh, interest. They're crazy about uh, esports and gaming. So uh, through that period, the content of live streaming has been expanded, extended. It's not only about live shows. It's not only about singing and dancing, but right now it's also about gaming. So gaming started to become popular then. And let's move one step forward. And when it comes to uh, 2015, 2016, and actually at that time, we transfer from PC to mobile. And, um, and also the 2016 is called mobile live streaming year. So the content is more diversified. It's not only about entertainment, uh, and then let's move forward to uh, 2017 to to uh, to till now. So it's it's really really diversified, highly diversified with e-commerce, sports, finance, education, and social and music. So and it's right now mainly mobile. The PC channels are like lost their audience. So that's a little bit of the background. Yeah, so as Tika is saying, it is a journey. But uh, Deo, I hope that we provided you some insights that are meaningful in your case. Fantastic. They've been very, very, very helpful. Thank you so much for that. Uh, sorry, one more uh, question, if you don't mind me, as a follow-up. How important were uh, the big brands coming on and, and embracing um, e-commerce live streaming, in your opinion, to the development of the whole sector? Yeah, so I, I'm not an expert on European live streaming, so it's difficult for me to comment. But uh, in China, it was significant because essentially the biggest brands the, that adapted e-commerce live streaming were actually e-commerce platforms. And then they started instructing their brand partners, in other words, big brands, to also jump on the wagon. And when you jump on the wagon of something new and promoting by the platform, you also get a lot of free traffic. So that was a very fruitful partnership for uh, about two years. I think 2019 was an absolutely phenomenal year for live streaming in China. And that's where really we heard a lot of big names, you know, doing that. So I would imagine that in Europe, it's the same. Big boys collaborating with platforms that want to push new feature are definitely going to be running this trend and are going to be early adapters and they're going to educate the market and the consumers how this is going to work and go from here and essentially for brands the benefit is they're going to get uh, well uh, if we uh, see that parallel with china some free traffic from the platform for a platform is great to promote a new feature and ultimately for a customer hopefully they're getting a cooler more uh, gamified and entertaining experience while shopping. And I think the major difference, and also when Sika was say, was talking, I it came to me, in China, uh, shopping is entertainment. And in Europe, because your question is specifically Europe-focused, it is not shopping is shopping, and it's not entertainment. So in China, for example, you go to a platform like Tmall five to eight times every day. 
you don't get go there to shop. I mean, what can you buy five to eight times a day? It's just crazy. But you go there to check out the news, the gossip, the new products, the new live stream. You know, within uh, Tmall uh, and Taobao, there is actually Weitao, which is like a social media. It's like a Facebook feed within uh, e-commerce platform where you can you know kind of be a part of a community so it's it's also a different attitude towards these channels um that i think uh, definitely impact the behavior thank you awesome awesome and we are moving to our last question for today daniela you are on thank you ashley um yeah my question was sort of similar to dio and well i come from mexico and it's starting like i mean i think the pandemic kind of helped us move like from like regular like shopping to e-commerce like we're like really behind in that sense but i wanted to uh, well i mean you kind of answered it so far but i wanted to see if you had any recommendations like i've seen so far that maybe moving like platforms more towards entertainment so that people like stay in the site more for like live streaming e-commerce uh diversify like, what other tips do you have for companies that are starting in uh, live streaming e-commerce uh, outside of China? Yeah, I would say gamification is definitely the key. Make it fun. It needs to be educational, fun, and it needs to be incentivized by coupons, by, uh, you know, best price, by gifts. So you need to turn it into virtual extravaganza. You're running your own gala every time you go live. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is uh, this is truly, truly important. Um, and also start investing in your own uh, team because ultimately this trend is not going to go anywhere. Um, the rest of the world is likely going to end up where China is right now in a couple of years from now. And uh, yeah, start making sure that your team knows how to prepare a script, operate a script, how to feel comfortable on camera, how to really, really drive it, be that early voice in this trend in your country, in your market. And uh, as I said, the benefits are only exponential from there on. Completely agree. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you so much, Daniela. Um, awesome. This is it for today. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us for this hour. Um, do make sure that you follow us on Clubhouse so that next time we close the room on Digital China and we're talking about um, Chinese consumers, we're talking about e-commerce, digital marketing. You basically um, are also in the group.